everyone, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my November TBR and I'm so excited because I just feel like these past few months I've been very kind of like a little burnt out but I just feel like I took a week to recover and not stress about reading and I just feel like in a good headspace to be reading. I'm also going on vacation and I get a lot of reading done while I'm on vacation because planes are the perfect place to read and I actually have not been in an audiobook mood lately which I think also contributes to maybe reading a little bit less but that's okay. I've been really into just listening to music, k-pop specifically, but I love discovering new music and listening to music a lot and I'm not mad that I'm not reading it audiobooks at the moment because I'm really enjoying that and that's just the way it is. I'm sure I'll go back to audiobooks soon because I do enjoy listening to a book but this TBR is going to be purely a physical TBR and that's just what it is. Yeah in October I actually only read six books. My wrap up should be coming up maybe next week and it's funny because it's like usually less than what I read but they were like pretty thick books especially with not listening to audiobooks I think it brought down the number a little bit but I overall felt like I had like a good reading month anyways because I enjoyed my time reading with six books. So with that in mind, I've structured this TBR so that it's hopefully something that's like achievable and will be a fun time. So let's just dive in to what I'm planning to read in November. First up, we have Escaping from Houdini by Carrie Maniscalco. This is the third book in the Stalking Jack the Ripper series, which consists of stalking Jack the Ripper, hunting Prince Dracula, escaping from Houdini, and capturing the devil. Also a novella between three and four, which is Becoming the Dark Prince. In the third adventure, we follow Audrey Rose Wadsworth and Thomas Cresswell as they embark on the RMS Utria on their way over to New York to solve a case. This takes place in 1889, so this is just when cruise liners were becoming a thing. And on this cruise, there is the Moonlight Carnival, which is the first, the first cruise liner to have daily nightly entertainment and as we know if you've ever gone on a cruise that is they are, they are all entertainment now so this was kind of the beginning of it and it was an old time carnival show with magic and, and Harry Houdini happens to be a part of this carnival. The mystery really begins when every night during these performances women are showing up murdered and at each murder a calling card is left which is a tarot card or a playing card and the murders are somehow linked to these tarot or playing cards and the way that it unfolds is just really so fascinating. Um, I just love Audrey Rose Wadsworth as a character so so much. It's really meaningful to me to see a woman in this time period where women were not allowed to pursue their passions if their passions were something outside of what society expected of them. And so Audrey wants to be a forensic scientist. She loves to dissect dead bodies and solve crimes and she follows that passion even though society looks down on her. She's very forward thinking. This novel is very feminist. Thomas Cresswell is her partner in crime and he is just so loving and supportive. I, don't know, I could just go like on and on about my love for the series. Check out my October wrap up for my thoughts on my, the first two books in the series but it's just just like phenomenal. I really just love the whole series so far. Next up I will read Becoming the Dark Prince by Gary Maniscalco which is the novella. This follows Thomas Cresswell and it kind of fills in some of the gaps. It's short and sweet at about 67 pages and the series is written from Audrey Rose's first person perspective. We get a little bit of Thomas's perspective and especially fills in the gap between the last chapter and the epilogue. I always like getting to get some sort of side perspective from a different character in the book so I think it'll be really good. And next up is Capturing the Devil by Carrie Maniscalco which is the final book in the Stalking Jack the Ripper series and I mean look at her. She is a beauty. She is shiny. I love her. <laughs> And this one follows Audrey Rose and Thomas Cresswell. They are now in America and they are hunting a killer and they find themselves in the Chicago World's Fair and this killer is more sinister and dark than the rest of them. Apparently, according to the summary, it's going to take place at some sort of infamous murder hotel that the murderer has built as some sort of torture chamber. So yeah, it's really cool. It's really interesting to read this series about serial killers in a time where the word serial killer is not even known. In this book they're referred to as career murderers and Jack the Ripper is really the first big known case of a serial killer so it's really really interesting and I just again 
adore Audrey Rose, adore Thomas Cresswell. I have an undying love for this series and I know I've mentioned this but I am buddy reading it with Isabella over from Throne of Pages and it has just been such a phenomenal experience to buddy read with her and buddy reading a whole series together. Like we just have so many thoughts and emotions and send our annotations back and forth. This has been a really great series to annotate because there are so many layers and thoughts that I have while reading and Isabella, if you're watching this, you are the best. Thank you for being my friend. And I'm so, so happy that we got to read this series together because it was perfect. The next book that I'm thinking of picking up is The Wallflower Wager by Tessa Dare. I have a flight that I will be on this coming Tuesday night. And the best thing to read on a plane is the Kindle, especially if it's a nighttime flight because then that way you don't have to have the overhead light on. I find it very annoying on planes, honestly. So the Kindle is just the best. So I think I'm going to be reading this one and this is a smutty book in Tessa Dare's Duke series girl girl meets duke i think is the name of the series i've enjoyed the first two they're just like some really great historical romance smut and i've heard that this one is great we follow lady penny who has like this home that she runs by herself because she's like the lone heir and she has all these animals that she fosters so she takes in animals that are unwanted and don't have a home and like she's like goats and like all these crazy different animals and she gives them a home and her neighbor, I think his name is Duke, so he's not actually a Duke, his name is Duke, moves in and he is like, you can't have all these animals running around and it's, something ensues and it's a romance set in London 1800s and Tessa Dare just does historical romance really well. This was my first series that I've dove into historical romance and I've really been enjoying it so far so I can't wait to read this one and I think it'll be fun to read on the plane. It will keep me entertained for the three hours that I am on there. So if you don't know, Queen of Nothing comes out November 19th. It's a very important date and I was thinking I would reread The Cruel Prince and The Wicked King before it came out but I just have so many books that I want to read and I've already read The Cruel Prince twice. I decided to just reread The Wicked King because it was wicked good. I live in Massachusetts now, I can say that. So I just really want to get like in the headspace to prepare for Queen of Nothing because I think it's just going to be phenomenal and I think this is going to be my plane read for the day that I fly back to Boston because I have, it's going to be a long day so I think I can just knock this out on the plane and also it will be during the day so there will be light on the plane because like I said I really don't like using those overhead lights so if I read a physical book it has to be on a daytime flight I, the, you're just getting a very deep analysis of my flight habits I guess but you know it is what it is oh also I went to a Holly Black signing so all of my copies of The Wicked King and the Cruel Prince I have two because I have the Barnes & Noble edition and the regular edition are all signed and it's amazing. <laughs> I went to a very small signing that Holly Black was at along with multiple other authors. I'll link the reading vlog for that up there and um, yeah, it was phenomenal. The Cruel Prince is about Jude Duarte, my favorite power hungry woman. She is the best. She's one of my favorite characters, I think. When she was little, her mother was murdered by her ex-husband, Fairy General, and her, her twin, and her older sister, who was half fae, were captured away to Fairy. But Jude and her twin are humans. They live in this world of very, very cruel fae who trick and deceive and are cunning, and Jude, more than anything, longs to prove to them that she belongs and she wants to join the court. However, she has an enemy in Cardin, the so-called cruel prince. They really just do not get along. <laughs> and they attend fairy school together and like Cardin kind of is always, there's always tension between the two. When Jude is given an offer to join the court by spying for one of the princes, she takes up on that offer but uncovers that there is more to his motives than there seems and The Wicked King is the sequel to this and we follow the consequences of Jude's actions because she makes some choices in the end of The Cruel Prince that really set the stage for The Wicked King and this ended on such a cliffhanger and I really think I'm gonna enjoy my experience rereading it but also like I'm afraid I'm afraid for Queen of Nothing it's like only 200 something pages it's very thin makes me worried but this is a phenomenal series and I just love the exploration of like this hate love dynamic which between Cardin and Jude, the Jude, the tension between them is so real. Like a lot of enemies to lovers is like they go from being enemies to like they love each other. But this is like they really have a lot of complicated feelings towards each other. And this book does a very, very good job of exploring that. And also just Jude is so power hungry and I absolutely adore her for it.
The next book is going to be a buddy read with my friend Chanel over at Chanel Time. I absolutely adore Chanel and I'm so happy that we can finally buddy read a book and that is going to be Frankly in Love by David Yoon. This book has been getting a lot of buzz and I think when I'm in Florida I'm gonna be like in the mood for like a fun cutesy read. I don't read a lot of contemporary but I feel like this could just be the book for me because it seems really cool and I've heard good things about it. It is about Frank Lee who is a Korean American and he is dating a white girl but his parents do not approve. They want him to date a Korean girl and so he fake dates a Korean girl that also wants to fake date a Korean boy to escape conflict with her parents. And I've heard that this book deals a lot with identity and feeling like you don't belong and I think it's gonna just be really impactful and I just can't wait to read it and I especially think reading it with Chanel is gonna be such a lovely experience because I know that she always has a lot to say to me about Korean culture because she's really into k-pop but also just learning about different cultures in general and i just feel like when i talk to her she's a very cultured and intelligent individual and i know that she will have a lot to add to the narrative of the story the next book that i want to read is shadow frost by coco ma this was sent to me by madison over at princess of paperback because she absolutely fell in love with this novel and was like girl you need to read this and i was like okay well if you insist and she did insist and she uh, bought it for me so here we are but i did meet coco ma at BookOn, and she's such a lovely individual she's really young she's like 19 or 20 and goes to yale so like good for you coco i really admire you for that the fact that you have a novel published and you're oh i should <laughs> should tape this in but i love how it says enjoy it my love fall for quinlan and astrin's love and shouldn't even sign it because she knows that i would know that it was her that sent it also coco ma talks about on her instagram how like velvety soft the cover is and it's true it is very velvety soft i just like really enjoy how it's black but then we have these like colors that emerge in the corner it's visually very stunning shadow frost takes place in the kingdom of exaria where there is a demon that cannot be vanquished aster and fallon heart is the princess of exaria and she discovers that she may just hold the key to defeating this demon that is terrorizing her kingdom so with the help of her friends she sets out to defeat this beast however when they set out on this mission they uncover a plot that plans to have asher assassinated herself and Astrid and her companions begin to wonder just how much of their lives have been a lie. This is just a very solid elemental magic debut novel and I have not read a solid elemental magic novel in a while so I'm really looking forward to this especially with how much Maddie adores it. So I and we have just like the same reading taste basically so I just know if she loves it I will probably love it too and I can't wait to finally read it. The next Thing that i want to read is a graphic novel and that is going to be monstrous volume to the blood by majory lu and illustrated by sana takeda i read the first novel in this series monstrous volume one awakening i was blown away like the art style in this is it's stunning it's like a high fantasy novel come to life this has got to be my favorite graphic novel that i've ever read i am slowly trying to get into them and i just think that this is the perfect one for me because it is just so fantastic in monstrous we follow micah half wolf who is a survivor of a cataclysmic war between the humans and the arcanics she's an arcanic and she infiltrates this human laboratory where the humans are capturing arcanics and doing experiments on them because within the humans are the witches and she goes undercover and basically like is a badass and we're slowly this is just volume one but we're slowly kind of uncovering this plot of why she is on this mission for revenge and it ends on such a big twist and a cliffhanger and i just can't wait to see where it goes like I just like love it's like very steampunk-esque and like the technology and the magic that's in here is really cool um so i can't wait to just like discover more i think there's four out right now in total and i want to read them all because i am just blown away by this series and again this is the cover for volume two the blood and i just like need to start like i mean just it's very gory and gritty but oh i just in love in love with the series like i just i need 
to read them all. And lastly on this TBR we have Death Note Volume 1, the black edition which was sent to me by Isabella because she's the freaking best. And Death Note is a manga I've heard a lot a lot about. I've only ever read one manga or two mangas in one series which is Waiting for Spring. So my experience with manga is not a lot. So I am really excited to just dive more into it because it just seems like it's, I mean, it's even more to love, right? So Death Note, I've heard everyone talking about and everyone says it's phenomenal. So when I said that I was interested in it, Isabella just went on my wish list and went ahead and bought for me because that's the kind of friend that she is. This story follows Light who basically finds a notebook that belongs to some sort of demon or death and whenever he writes someone's name in it, they die. So I think he kind of takes it upon himself like a very vigilante type thing to kill bad people but you know I think it's very morally gray because like how can you tell who's bad? Like should a human have the power to like just kill people by writing their names down? Is he a murderer? I think it's gonna dive into a lot of morally gray territory and I think it's just gonna make for a phenomenal read. All right, and with that, that is the end of my November TBR. I'm really looking forward to so many novels that I am reading in November. I think it's just gonna be a phenomenal month for reading. Please let me know down below what you are planning on reading this month and have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.